All of these items make us a small fortune selling them on eBay. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some of the items that we sell on eBay that make us a small fortune. These are items we sell all of the time. Let's have a look right now. We mostly mess with vintage jewelry, so I don't usually buy anything new or anything like that. I like the costume jewelry. I like the designs. I like the rhinestones and the whole works. This one here went for 25 bucks plus shipping. This is a dollar purchase or less. I buy stuff like this in massive bulk quantity sometimes. I can buy a box of, say, 10, 15, 20 pounds of vintage jewelry sometimes from some of my sourcing locations. This stuff sells like mad if you get the right ones, of course, just like anything else. Now, print ads are something else I sell quite often. They're usually longer tail items unless you have a really primo ad, but they do sell. I don't usually mark them down. This one sold for full price for $17.50. It's a small, tiny piece of paper cut out of something else. So if you know some of the ones to look for, some of the better designs, some of the better names, better graphics ones, ones that are engraved, of course, you can get some good money out of them. The earlier, the better with some of the smaller ones. Newer ones, you want big, large, colorful ones from bigger magazines, Saturday Evening Post or something along that line. Besides just messing with vintage costume jewelry, I do like Victorian items. Paper, clothing buttons, um, you name it, Victorian era, I do like, and I do try and source and buy them when I can. This is a Victorian bracelet. It's gold-filled. We sold this one for $200 plus shipping and insurance and the whole works. Nice sale. I got $2 into this one here, 2 bucks. Most people didn't think much of it. It was worn. I've had it cleaned and the whole works. Got nothing else extra into it other than a few cents into listing it and then my final value fees. Excellent purchase, excellent sale. Now, clothing buttons, uniform buttons, even fancy lady and Victorian buttons we do mess with fairly heavily. We're at the process of hitting the 2,000 mark to have 2,000 individual individual button lots up and then we're going to the 5,000 mark after that um, I play heavily in some of these vintage niche markets and they make us literally a fortune on their own last month I did $8,500 just in clothing buttons not counting anything else just clothing buttons so it's a big area and I took an offer on this one for $50 plus shipping Cufflinks are another area that I'm heavy into. I do buy men's cufflinks, uh, tie clips. I've got some of my own that I've bought over the years that I collect. Uh, this is a cufflink set for the B&O, Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Line. Now, I bought a whole bag of different railroad line related cufflinks all similar to this here for $15 for them all. This one here sold for $40 on its own, and I've sold another one for $30 on its own. Out of that $15 investment, I still have like 30 more of these pairs to go. So I've got a fortune just in that $15 purchase. If sales stay the way they are with those items, we're going to make over 1000 bucks just on that $15 investment into some cufflinks. Now with buttons, you have to know some things. Now the royal cipher on here is from King Edward VII. Now what's important about him is he was king only from 1901 till I think his death in 1910. So he wasn't king very long so there's not as much material for King Edward VII. So most of his stuff goes for more money. The minute I see the royal cipher which is what is shown on this button I knew I had some bucks right off the bat. So very good one here. 40 bucks out of this one here with shipping. So I I can't complain. It's a nice, original, authentic piece. It has an applied royal cipher of Edward on the face of this on a domed button. We're also heavy into media items. I buy slide collections, um, projectors, movie film, which I've got videos on, negatives, anything related to photos, negatives, slides, any of that I buy. And many times I buy bulk lots of NOS items with it. I've got a bunch of projector lights that we bought, and we're still selling them. And I sold this one for 35 I think, plus shipping on this one as well. I've got like a quarter into each one of these bulbs. They're NOS stock, so they're still well worth selling. Selling. Don't care if they sit a little while, someone's going to buy them. We sell them fairly regularly on these. 
trade cards, paper, postcards of any kind. I sell anything paper. I love paper in general. This one did sell for $57.50. Uh, farming engines, thrashers, and things. The company Russell's does a ton of that. It's rare to find the items in good condition from back in the day. So this one did, as I said, sell for $57.50. I have nickel into this at the most. I bought an assortment of vintage paper at a sale all in one big lump sum, about a nickel, I would say, honestly. Now, photos I love. I just love photos of any kind. What's hot now are China, anything China, uh, Korea, any of those areas over there, they do extremely well. Uh, this one, I believe, went for $45. Nothing super fancy, but it's an authentic photo from the 1940s of the Temple of Heaven in Peking, China. Excellent image, nice quality. It's not super big, but still excellent sale there. As I just said, I do a lot in postcards. And here's a very nice one from China, uh, Temple Grounds and the whole works, U.S. Navy Sailors. There you can see the price. Excellent sale on something like this. Any of these sorts, I do nab up anytime I can get them. Many people don't pay attention. They don't realize where this is at. They don't pay enough attention to read it or look into these. And that's where they're missing out on finding things that are worth this much money. Labels of any sort, I sell a ton of. This one went for $25. I accepted an offer on it. Uh, I sell them all the way up to $57.50 for these basically same identical labels, just from different roller rinks across the country. I buy and sell any kind of label you could imagine. Wine labels, alcohol labels, um, luggage labels, poster stamps, labels of any sort, shipping labels. If it's paper and it was made to stick on something, I'll buy it and sell it. Bottle labels are, are one of my favorites, but anything graphical like this, I do extremely well. And again, $25 plus they paid shipping. Photos, again, I sell a ton of those. Now, the items I'm showing you are just random picked. I didn't try to pick anything high, low, or anything else. I just randomly picked some out of what we've sold recently. These are recent sales within the last week or so. Uh, 20 bucks I took on this one. This one's been up for a little while. These are one of those passive income. I list a couple thousand of these. I sell them constantly throughout. You see me selling them all the time. This is a steady revenue flow from the very day I listed them, and I have nothing to do with it once they're up. I just put them up and forget about them, and I'm constantly, constantly, constantly getting money from them. When I list another big bunch of them, a couple thousand more, I sell those original ones as well, plus the old ones will be bought too from other people trying to save on shipping. So excellent items to sell here. Now, Christmas postcards are a combination of two things that I do love. Now, this is a Raphael Tuck and Sons postcard. Raphael Tuck has made us a small fortune on its own. So I always look out for these. I always do extremely well with the right type of cards. A Christmas with Christmas gnomes on a sled and small Christmas trees. It did sell full price. It's got some staining issues and some other issues. I still got $34.50 plus shipping. And the last item is a record. This was a cylinder record. Early one, I sell a ton of these. I don't mind waiting on selling stuff like this. A lot of people will blow them out. Now we piece these out and I usually make four or five times what other sellers would out of the same purchases. So if I buy a couple hundred of these in a collection, I will probably make four times what the other people do who sell them in big lots. And I don't care if it takes a little while to sell. And we usually cross-list these sorts of items on other platforms just to get the added exposure that most other sellers don't do. So anyway, that's just a touch on some of the items that we sell. These items honestly and sincerely make us a small fortune. These pay our bills. They make us money. They build my savings account from selling stuff like this. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
evil. Darkseid attacks. His horde of villains spread chaos and destruction. And now they face Earth's mightiest heroes. The Superpowers Collection explodes into battle. What's this? Calabac captured? Now what? Paralyzed parademons? Who did this? Batman in the Delta Probe 1. The Darkseid destroyer ready to attack? Batteries not included. Vehicles and figures with power action each sold separately from Kenner's Superpowers Collection. The Omega Ray ineffective? Catch pods. Three against one? How will the Delta Probe fight the Darkseid destroyer? You decide.